What is Kundalini? Okay. In Hinduism, it is considered a form of divine feminine energy. But Kundalini is only at its peak when all chakras are at full capacity. The divine feminine energy is located at the base of the spine, also known as the muludara. Okay. So we already went over that there are a total of 114 chakras. Total of 114 chakras total. What is Kundalini? What is an example of Kundalini? Me speaking right now is Kundalini. You listening right now is Kundalini. A dog barking is Kundalini. It is basically the fundamental life force. Every life force, every life force is Kundalini. Whether it be an organism, an animal, human, everything has Kundalini. Now, how can Kundalini be awoken? Now, truly, to get to the Kundalini, it requires a massive amount of devotion, compromise, and understanding. It takes a lot of inner work and outer work to make sure you're finalizing the Kundalini experience. Now, Here's an example of how you can awaken it. Kundalini can be awakened through rising above the desires of the senses. The yogi who has, who has got a pure heart and a mind free from passions and desires will be benefited by awakening Kundalini. Now, what exactly does that mean? Now, Kundalini in essence is the most potent form of yoga. Now, while it is the most potent, in essence, it is the most dangerous also. While it is the most potent, it is also the most dangerous. Because without the correct intentions, these things can really open up an abyss. And you'll see what I mean if you're able to get up in chakra ranking. So... To continue on about the the kundalini and its need of a pure heart, right? One should perfectly be desireless and should be full of vairagya. Vairagya is a term in Hindu that, that in Hindi that roughly translates as dispassion, detachment, or renunciation from the pains and pleasures in the temporary materialistic world. Be full of vairagya before awakening full kundalini. Now, like I said, guys, this whole process with the seven chakras up the spine, up till you reach the, the crown, this whole process requires inner and outer work. Now, vairagya is a very important term in Hindi because this is a translation for removal of attachments now why is this so important guys because humans and society are pushing this thought process of heavy materialistic value right and making people just truly value materials more than being the best version of themselves. They're not finding contentment with themselves and their actions and how they impact others, but rather how they would look with an item, how they would be perceived with said status, with said money. So when we speak about these chakras, it's important that I always say that, yes, there's a total of 114, right? There's a total of 114 chakras. You don't need to be, you don't even need to have all chakras lit up. Not all 114 will be activated for you to sustain life. Only 21 of the 114 chakras need to be working for you to just survive, reproduce. If you don't care about the spiritual enlightenment, the journey that comes with it, 
then it's it you don't need to worry about the 114. But the Kundalini in the yoga sense, right? It is the most potent, right? And it is the most dangerous because of how powerful it is. Now, when I speak, I'm going to make another video specifically talking about all seven chakras and how they flow upwards, right? Because guys, the flow of energy is the flow of energy upwards, up through your spine, guys. This is a very important concept because the flow of energy up through your spine is what's going to give you your energy, okay? Let's get into this. It can also be awakened when a man rises above Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, and other impurities, okay? These impurities are Sanskrit, so I'm going to explain which each one is and why it's important to get over it. This ties into the fact that you have to be do the inner work and the outer work before you finally can reach Kundalini. Kama is defined as desire, longing, pleasure, and considered essential for the well-being of an individual. Now, why is it essential that you must rise above Kama? Because Kama be can become quite dangerous. Um... It can tie into other things. Desire can tie into lust and all these things can be, can take away from your Viagra. So that is very important. Next one is Krodha. This is fury, rage, and indignation. Guys, we don't even need to explain this, but obviously you can't be at your full enlightened, enlightened peak if you're angry and raged. You can't. You just can't see... You can't open the third eye if you can't, if you're raged. The next one is Loba. And that is the greed for wealth, okay? If you come into this with the intentions that you want to make more money off of this, or this is some ploy to get rich, and, and you want to use Kundalini in a negative sense, you will face the repercussions that come with it. You will face the repercussions that come with it because it's so dangerous and you don't want to go into this with negative intent you want to always do things with positive intent and positive enforcements because you will get torched the next one is moha it's a loss of consciousness bewilderment perplexity distraction infatuation delusion error moha refers to desire and attachment to the world or worldly matters similar to the other three um moha is similar to a loss of consciousness. Okay, guys? About 98% of our thoughts are unconscious. 2% of it is conscious. That whole other 98% unconscious thoughts, we must be able to regulate our mind before we reach this enlightenment state. Okay, guys? Now, finally, Mada. Arrogance, excessive pride, obstinacy, and stubborn-mindedness. Pride and stubborn-mindedness. Guys, think about all the times you've missed out on the opportunity just because of your pride. Think about all the times you could have resolved something, but you didn't because of your pride. Think about all the times pride has gotten in your way. And I, I'm, I'm just saying this, not necessarily saying that you have to be judged for it, but just think about it, guys. In order to reach this full Kundalini peak, you have to get over all parts of the ego. You have to complete all parts of the inner work in order to be fully spiritually enlightened, to fully drive your energy from the bottom all the way to the top, okay? Okay. So, some methods that can help you activate your kundalini, okay? It's called pranayama. It's equal breathing, complete breath. It's the breathing where you breathe through your nostrils, breathe in through your nostrils. Right there, I breathe, I breathe it in through my nostrils. I let it fill in through my chest, climb up my spine, let it fill in through my throat, and then you deeply exhale through your nose. This is what pranayama is. 
If you could do this in a meditative state with your eyes slightly closed, breathe in, you guys will see a great, great reduction in anxiety, great reduction in any any um, nervousness you have in the moment, and an increase in focus. This is your chakras working with you. Another one is asanas. Okay? This is uh, when you're in a seated position. So when you mix in the asanas with the pranayama, you can, in a sense, just be in a, in a seated position and pray upwards. With the pranayama, you're focused, and with the seated position, with the asana, you're going to be seated and breathing. This will regulate your breathing and decrease anxiety and inc upcrease, increase your chakra energies. Also, you could do mudras. These are hand gestures. They have the power of joy and happiness. These are also important. The mudras, between the pranayama and the asanas, all these things can help raise your kundalini. But we have to keep reiterating that the kundalini is very, 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 very powerful. And it should not be taken lightly because of its potent effects. Okay, so when we think of chakra, right? And when we think of it, we usually think of it in a circular motion. Because us as humans, when we perceive things through our vision, everything is usually in a circular motion. Even though these things, chakra meets in a form of a triangle. When things radiate, it radiates in the way of a circle. So think of when you throw a, a, a stone in the pond. The ripple effects become, whoosh, it becomes a circle, right? Now, like I mentioned earlier, there were 114 chakras. There are 112 within the body, and there are two outside, two external. Now, the reason why these numbers are so important is because while well, there are a total of 114 the number 108 is extremely important okay the number 108 is extremely extremely important I'm gonna break it down completely right now so the number 108 this is all you truly need to get to that spiritual side if you could get to the 108 you can awaken the other ones they will awaken with you but getting to the 108 is, is going to be a difficult task if you don't have the right intentions. Now, what is so important about 108? Why is 108 such a crucial number? 108 is the diameter from the sun to the earth. 108 is also the diameter between the, between the earth and the moon. Now, what happens when we add up 108, those those single numerals all add up, all those up one plus zero plus eight what does that give us nine in my past video i made a, a video about the completionist about the nines see there are nine solar systems in the planet there it is very completionist it takes nine months to get for a child to happen 270 days approximately two plus seven plus zero nine the nine is the completion guys that is embedded in us so when the 108 is so important because this explains the structure of the solar system versus the structure of our nine main systems, right? Very important stuff when we talk about the systems and how they intertwine with this, okay? But to get to the 108, to open more perception, you have to make an adequate atmosphere for yourself. You have to make the appropriate atmosphere internally and externally. It has to be in a way of love internally and a way of love externally, guys. If not, you will not be able to reach that 108. That's that special number 108. To the completion nine. 108 leads you to completion nine. Okay. And the thing is, when you are able to create this appropriate atmosphere, right, internally and externally, you create a protective cocoon, right? So when you're out anywhere in life, whatever the nuance may be, you have a protective cocoon around you. So even if you are in some sort of trouble or you're transmitting 
energy and or bad energy is transmitted towards your way you still have this cocoon and this layer of protectiveness because of the kundalini right so when you're fully at peak of the kundalini and all chakras are maxed out you could transmit anything but will it be received receptiveness is a question you could transmit almost anything that's why it says it's the most potent and the most dangerous but the truth is you cannot think yourself out of joy and love. That is the most important thing of Kundalini. Think about, think about back when you were a children and a kid. Everything was joyful because you created that thought process. Now as you got older, these thoughts, societal engineering and things of that nature has created you to think differently. Think less of your joy and happiness and to think crucially, right? Use the thought of well-being. When you make these transmissions, right? When I said you could transmit energy, I said do it for the positivity. Do not do it for greed because you will get torched. So use your thoughts for well-being. And, and remember, joy and happiness comes from within, right? And another reason why the number nine is so important is because in Tamil, there are 63 sages. They, they specifically don't have a, a complete um, record on how many sages there were then. At that time but they specifically had to leave the number for historical context 63 why is 63 so important six plus three what is that nine i keep going back to the nines because the nine is the most completed number and it's the final number that's the fine from one through nine that is the final number okay it's the completion number and it's it has holds extreme significance in numerology letterology and just and just society today so if you can reach 63 chakras, you are considered a beginning sage. If you can reach 84 chakras, you are superhuman. Now, 63 chakras, beginning sage, what is that? 6 plus 3 is 9. 84 chakras, superhuman, what is that? 8 plus 4 is 12. 1 plus 2 is 3. And if you square the 3, you get to 9. Okay? And if you get to the 108, you're really complete. Because if, you, if you're at the 108, just consider yourself complete. And if you get to the 114, you are Shiva. You are in line with Shiva. And that is something you should want to reach for. You should want to reach for the highest enlightenment. That is something you should want to do. 